All right, let's go ahead and talk about the Facebook Pixel in 2021. So if you've been subscribed and watching our videos for some time, then you've seen us highlight some of our amazing client results, like these hundreds of thousands of website leads and these millions of dollars in website sales. But we always get asked about how we're able to see these sales and leads precisely in the Facebook Ads Manager and even able to calculate things like our cost per lead, our cost per sale, and the value of that sell. Well, that is all done through the use of the Facebook Pixel in 2021. So in this video, I want to unpack everything there is to know about the Facebook Pixel, what you need to do with it, how to set it up, and everything else step by step. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sean with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency that saves people from bad marketing and no growth. Now, if you wanna run ads on Facebook or Instagram, then you should absolutely, without hesitation, track every single thing with the Facebook Pixel in 2021. Now, natively, Facebook helps you track things like impressions, reach, clicks, and all other costs associated with their ads. But those can be viewed as vanity metrics. And at the end of the day, we want to track real results. We want to see real leads, real sales that your ads have generated. Hey Sean, look, I can track my advertisements all the way from the moon. Okay, kind of like that. So exactly how do we do it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly what you need to know and also review some of the key details that you need to know about other changes with the iOS 14. Let's go ahead and jump in with number one, what is the Facebook Pixel? So the Facebook Pixel is a small piece of code that you place on your website. The code then collects data that helps you track events or conversions from your Facebook ads. This data is great because it helps you optimize ads, build better audiences, and remarket to people who have already taken some kind of action. I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get a little bit deeper and talk about what can you track with the Facebook Pixel. So there are 17 standard actions that the Facebook Pixel can help you track with very little effort or very little adjustments. Now I put standard in quotations because these 17 actions are not, I repeat, they are not the only actions that you can track with the Facebook Pixel. Instead, it's more like what 90% of people may want to use when they're tracking their Facebook ads. But as you start to get more comfortable and more advanced with Facebook ads, you're going to want to go well beyond these standard events and start tracking all kinds of things. Because at some point in your journey, you're going to want to maximize your potential reach of your Facebook ads and optimize them to the maximal level possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the 17 standard events. Okay, number one, you have purchases. So when someone buys something on your website, you can track that. Number two, you have leads. So when someone signs up for something on your site, whether it's a free trial or something else, like maybe they just inquired on your website, you can track that. When someone completes a registration on a form on your website, like a subscription form, that's trackable, okay? When someone adds their payment information, all right? When they're going through the process of purchasing something and they put in their credit card, you can track it. When someone adds something to their cart, okay, they, they, they're shopping around on your website to add something to your cart, you want to be able to track when that's happening. All right, when someone initiates a checkout, meaning they go through the checkout page, they land somewhere on the checkout phase, you want to know how many people are getting there from your Facebook ads. When someone uses the search function on your website, so they're looking for something particular on your site, you can track that as well. When someone lands on a specific page on your website, this is called a page page view, that's trackable. When someone contacts your website, that's also trackable. When someone donates or clicks a donate button on your website, that is trackable. All right. When someone is looking for your business location, you can also track that with the standard events. All right. When someone is scheduling or looking to book an appointment with your business, that's definitely trackable. And then of course, when someone submits an application on your website around your program, your service or your product or anything like that, you can track that as well. All right. And there's a couple other honorable mentions that I didn't talk about, but I'll put them down below as well. So yeah, that's a lot of tracking options. Hey Sean, look, there's so many tracking options that my head is spinning. All right, so of course you don't need to pick all the options right away. In fact, many of them may not apply to you at all, but there are some instances where all of them can be valuable given the nature of your business. 
Okay, so before we look at how to set all this up, I have to drill down into your head the importance of tracking because I see so many people get excited about doing Facebook ads that they rush right into setting up an ad only to find out later that they have no idea what the heck is happening with their Facebook advertising. Even worse, if you have a business that is making sales from another source, then tracking really becomes more important because you're not sure if your Facebook ads are working or not. So definitely make sure you get your pixel installed. So of course, this is a key reason to slow down, set up your Facebook pixel, test your Facebook pixel to make sure it's working, which may take a couple of days before you're ready to set up a new Facebook ad campaign. Now, lastly, the Facebook pixel helps you unlock the true power of Facebook ads as when it comes to custom audiences. Okay, I've noticed that custom audiences are the difference most of the time between success and failure when it comes to Facebook advertising. We've done advertising for over 1,000 people and the clients who have custom audiences have better results every single time. The problem is that most people have no idea that a Facebook pixel is basically a requirement if you wanna create custom audiences. But even with the Facebook pixel installed, custom audiences are very advanced. So if this video gets over 200 likes, then we'll make another video going over all the custom audiences, how to use them and set them up step by step. All right, so by now you should have a general understanding of Facebook pixels. Let's do a walkthrough step by step on how to set it up correctly. I'm gonna hop out of the camera, share my screen, and walk through four steps for setting up your pixel, which are number one, how to find and create your Facebook pixel. Number two, how to install it on various different websites like Shopify, WordPress, and more. Number three, how to set up events and the actions that you need to track. And number four, how to monitor all the activity to make smart decisions. Now let's go ahead and change scenes to my computer. All right, I'm on my computer now. And as you can see, I am inside our Facebook ads manager for the life marketing brand. And right here at the very top, you see a red bar that says Apple has announced they are releasing the iOS 14, technically the iOS 14.5, changes the week of April 26, which is the week that I'm making this video. So let's talk briefly about the Facebook pixel and the iOS 14.5 update. Now, Facebook has been getting a lot of heat from their users and from Congress that they need to have more security and have more privacy for their users, people who have iPhones or iPads or other iOS devices. All right. Why is this? Because a lot of people feel like their data is being taken advantage of and manipulated by advertisers by having that data. Their advertisers are able to get people to take the actions that they want them to take. All right, which sounds great to us, honestly, but of course, for the users and privacy protection, it's not always a good thing. So the major change that you need to be aware of is that going forward, there's going to be a maximum of eight standard events that you can use with the Facebook pixel. All right. So if I click this complete task, it's going to tell us here, OK, let's prepare for iOS changes coming soon. And then due to Apple's iOS, only eight conversion events are able to be sent through from pixels from a single domain. All right, so that is the major change that is taking effect right now, all right? So you can still use the Facebook pixel in 2021. The only thing that's happening is they're taking down the amount of conversion events that you can track. All right, now let's go ahead and get into the main purpose of this video, which is how do you create a Facebook pixel and track all your events? So you can click these dots on the left side, you're gonna go to events manager, um, it's a shortcut here, but you can also scroll down and find it here, Events Manager. And then on the left side, we're going to look for something that says Connect to Data Sources, okay, which is right here in this green button, Connect Data Sources. All right, now there's several different data sources that you can connect from. You have a website, you have an application, if you have a mobile app or something like that. Um, you can connect data sources offline if you get like users' emails and phone numbers, et cetera, from an offline source, or it can connect to your CRM if you use that to manage like, you know, outside sales or lead generation pipelines. For this example, we're gonna click on web and we're gonna click connect. 
All right, boom. Now you have two different methods of which you can create your Facebook pixel with. You can use it through the conversion API, which I'm going to make an entirely separate video next week talking all about Facebook conversion APIs. But for this video, we're focusing on the Facebook pixel in 2021. So I'm going to click on that. Right, and boom, we can start to name our pixel. For this example, I'm just going to do FB Facebook tutorial uh, pixel tutorial. All right, boom, let's continue. All right, now you have two options. We can install the pixel manually or we can choose a partner integration. Let's look at how you install the code manually. So basically you take this, what's called a base code, copy it, and you're going to place it in the head tags of your website. So the head tags are basically the top of your website where your logo sits. Actually, let's just pull up Life Marketing's website, okay? And I'll show you guys what the head tags look like. So right here at the top of Life Marketing website where you see the logo, you see home, services, pricing, contact, our number, this is what's called the head tags. And above that, you have the header toolbar, which is probably too much information, but where your pixel sits is right here in the head tags. All right, now why why do you want your pixel here? Because whatever page you visit, whether it's our services page, the head, header is still here, right? If you go to our work page, our header is still here. Our contact page, our header is still here. So this is great because we're able to basically track whatever pages that people visit from our website as long as the pixel is in the header tags. All right, so you would install it right there. We continue. I like to turn on advanced matching to collect more data. It doesn't hurt, so why not? And then from here, you can start setting up your events. All right, so this is how you would do it manually. You take your code, you try to find the head tags of your website, place it there, and boom, you're ready to track events. All right, now let's look at the partner integration. On a partner integration, if you have a website that Facebook is partnered with, like Shopify or Kajabi or HubSpot, or with some other popular ones, Wix is popular, WordPress, WooCommerce. If you have any of these website builders and you can connect with your partner directly, the process is super, super, super easy. All right, so let's continue pixel setup, connect. Uh, let's go back to the install the code manually for this example, open event setup tool. All right, so you enter your website here, okay? So of course you have to install the pixel, so I can't really show you how to set up events from a face, uh, fake pixel, but I'm going to go to Life Marketing's pixel and show you guys how it looks. Okay, so right now Life Marketing is tracking page views, content views, leads, and people who call us or contact us. All right, so if you were setting up a new pixel, you click on Add Events. You can use the Conversion API, which we're going to cover in another video, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe for that. Um, but you can also set up your events from a pixel, which is what I'm used to doing for the last 10 years. So here you add your website. In this case, I'm going to do lifemarketing.com. We'll open our website and it's going to take some time to load. But when it does, you're going to see this cool event setup tool for your website. All right. You immediately you're going to see two events on this page. We're tracking people who contact us. So anytime someone clicks this call us button, it's going to show up in our events manager. All right. That somebody contacted us, which you see we have 198 in the last 28 days. Okay, so you also see this view content, which is anytime someone clicks on this get a free proposal button, we are tracking that view content. But the key thing here is if you didn't have these set up, let's just take this out for a second, for example. If I wanted to track whatever button, let's say for you, maybe get a quote, or maybe for you is viewing a specific product. You can track anytime someone clicks this button by clicking, track this button, clicking that button, giving it a event. Remember, we went over 17 standard events um, and then going back and clicking view content. Now, on this value section, if you are selling something, you can choose the value of what that button was worth if it was clicked. But in this case, there's no value associated to it. So I say don't track value, confirm, boom. Now, again, in my events manager, anytime someone clicks it, I'm going to see, oh, I got 3,000 people who wanted to see a proposal in the last whatever time frame you choose. All right. So, again, 
right here on the page. You can track whatever you want, whatever buttons you want to, to be clicked. In fact, when I click track a new button, it gives me all the options right here highlighted for me and even more than that. All right. So that's some some surface level stuff. If you want to track buttons, you can also track URL. So why is this important? Well, if you're tracking, if somebody visited your thank you page or your checkout page or something like that, you want to track the URL. So for our example, we have a thank you page that is contact us backslash no or yes. So in this case, let's say no. And anytime somebody visits this page, it means they contacted us, um, did not schedule a call yet, right? And then they see this thank you page. So they're still a lead. They're still a lead. And what I want to do is I want to track how many people saw my Facebook ad and then they got to this thank you page. So then I click track a URL. It automatically populates this URL. And I just need to give this an event name, right? So in this case, it's a lead. But if it was a purchase, I'd say purchase. If it was a customized product I want to see, I put that in. If, if it was someone starting a free trial, I put that in. All right, but in this case, it's a lead, so I click on lead. Um, they're not buying anything, so there's no value. Oh, it says I'm already tracking leads from this event, so let's call it something else. Let's just call it uh, complete registration, just for this example. All right, it says you're already tracking lead event on this URL. All right, so I can't do it for this URL, guys, but you guys probably get the picture, right? So if I wasn't already tracking this, then I just hit confirm and then boom, it's going to show up in my events manager. OK, how many leads I got in the last whatever time period I want to look at. Right. Like if I said the last seven days, I could even drill down to how many leads we got in the last seven days. OK, so 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 that's it, guys. That's it. That's how you set up your Facebook pixel. Um, that's how you track events with the Facebook pixel. There's this new aggregated event measurement as well as the conversion api which i'm going to talk about next week in my next video so again make sure you're subscribed and now i'm going to hop back in front of the camera to give you guys some highlights and summaries for this video all right so there you have it everything you need to know about how to set up use your facebook pixel in 2021 i hope this video was helpful if you enjoyed it please don't forget to like it and if it gets 200 likes we're going to make another more advanced Facebook video on custom audiences. All right. In the meantime, if you want to check out more great Facebook marketing content, then make sure you watch these two videos coming up next, and I'll see you over there. Ooh.